My mess here. I don't like to work with all this stuff in my way. Okay, so on the mandible, I'm going to identify the buckle shelf. Hers are rather large. Now I'm going to try to take advantage of quite a bit of this space here. And my tray needs to be short of the depth of the vestibule, but it needs to cover all of the retromolar pad. And so I'm going to come short here. She's got some undercuts I'm going to need to flow a little bit of wax into. Again, modifying my tray up in this area because I can't really come up around Frenna that don't exist. Her ridge is so severely resorbed, we just don't have it. And I need to get anatomy. Can you all see this little area right here? This where the alginate kind of folded over and I had a void there. So I need to make sure that I don't come around this. I need to go over it because I need my tray to be long enough. I'm missing some anatomy right here. So in order to overcome that, I have to make sure my tray extends beyond it and covers it. I come down like something like that. In the anterior area, it's going to be super flat and really skinny. So this tray handle is going to require that I make it thick in this area. Do you see how skinny this is going to be? So if it's only two millimeters wide and two millimeters thick, this thing can break very easily, especially because it's going to be super tall in the back. So I'm going to end up with something that looks like this and it's super thin here. I don't want that to break. I'm going to be mindful of that as I go along. Now this area here and this area here are going to be my buckle shelves. That's where my stops are going to go. And I'm going to make sure I extend my handle high and all the way around. And we'll see that as we go forward. So I'm going to start by heating this up. Because her jaw or her arch form is wide in the back, she's kind of U-shaped, V-shaped combo here. I want to make sure that I get enough wax, and I'm probably just going to do this in two sections. Go ahead and do this half of the mouth. I'm going to see where my block out needs to be after I do this. A lot of people will go ahead and just do the other side. I like to go ahead and trim away the excess and just go to half the arch so I know that I can do one more piece on that side. Again, this is personal preference, guys. It's not the only way to do it. I have found that usually the advice I follow the least, except for in certain situations, but the advice I follow least often is the advice that says this is the only way or this never works or um, it won't work if you don't ever do this. Uh, so in dentistry, you'll find it's about what works well for you, what works good in your hands, and what is reliable. Um, the concept is what's important, understanding why you're doing what you're doing, and figuring out ways to overcome challenges that patients present with. And this one is Got a, quite a, she's got quite a few challenges for me to, to overcome. Thickness of this denture, for one, is going to be an issue. She doesn't have a whole lot of anatomy for me to grab onto. She has pretty low expectations. She's been wearing dentures for many years um, that are poor, poorly fitting dentures, and she gets along with them okay, so that's in my interest, my best interest, that this patient already has had a reality check of what it's like to wear a denture in conditions such as this. Um, that doesn't mean that it's going to make her happy when she spends a lot of money on a denture that I make her that doesn't fit well. So I need to maximize my efforts to make this work well for her. Okay, so you can see I've covered my anatomy. I'm going to take a quick break from this. I'm going to go over and finish the tray uh, curing on the maxilla.